Hi, I want to ask you if you will just to close your eyes for a few minutes and uh, fast forward a few months to next April, next May and just imagine yourself outside walking perhaps in a park or in the countryside or even just down the street and for the first time in 2024 you just feel the warmth of the sunshine on your face and uh, there's blue sky and the, the birds are singing and uh, it just feels so good after perhaps uh, uh, lots of weeks of long grey cold winter and, and early spring and, and just the first time you feel outside uh, the sunshine on your face it's like it almost melts away doesn't it anxieties and uh, stresses at times and it just feels so good relaxing your muscles and joints and uh, you know we look forward to that very much don't we all i just want you to hold that thought for a minute uh, because this morning or today we're looking at uh, the line from heart the herald angels sing hail the sun of righteousness and uh, Charles Wesley when he wrote this carol he lifted this line from some verses that are actually at the very end of the Old Testament in fact they're in the last chapter and I'm just going to read from Malachi chapter 4 surely the day is coming it will burn like a furnace all the arrogant and every evildoer will be stubble and that day that is coming will set them on fire says the Lord Almighty. Not a root or a branch will be left to them. But for you who revere my name, the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in its wings, and you will go out and leap like calves released from the stall. Then you will trample down the wicked. There will be ashes under the soles of your feet on the day when I do these things, says the Lord Almighty. This is a is a very stark message, isn't it? Uh, there's a day coming when God will act justly, in love, uh, fairly, and in righteousness. And it seems that on that day, only two things are going to happen. One of two things will happen. Either we read that the arrogant, the evildoer, the wicked will be burnt up or trampled under feet, or the Son of Righteousness will rise with healing in his wings, uh, just like that warm sunshine that we look forward to next spring. And there'll be a sense of carefree freedom for those on whom that Son of Righteousness rises. And what is it in that passage that decides the outcome, that decides which of those two things are going to happen? Well, in the version I read, it's those who revere God's name that the Son of Righteousness will rise upon them. Those who choose to worship God, those who choose to surrender their lives to God, those who choose to follow him and submit themselves to him. I find it interesting that Charles Wesley, you know, was one of the, of the people at the forefront of what is perhaps the greatest move of God in this nation that's ever happened uh, just over 250 years ago. And that he chose a line out of that passage which so clearly talks about the fact that there is a day of judgment, that there is a day when God, uh, when the wicked will be, will be burnt up, but those who choose to follow Jesus will uh, respond to him and the son of righteousness will rise over them. Perhaps that's why they were so passionate uh, in their speaking and so clear in their message at that time. But just as the sun warms us and we feel the benefit of that uh, just day by day as we look forward to that next spring, that actually in some way that's a tiny, tiny reflection, a tiny, tiny mirror of the effect of Jesus rising over our lives and the enormous difference that he makes as the son of righteousness rising over our lives that he is the one and him alone that makes us right with God that he deals with the things that separate you and I from God and all the consequences of that and so as we sing a carol that delights in the arrival of Jesus as a baby we're drawn to the ultimate grand design of why it is he came in the first place. To heal us, to restore us, and to rescue us. Only he can do this. Truly, the Son of Righteousness has risen. And so we say, hail or welcome, Son of Righteousness. Welcome, Jesus. Welcome into our lives. Come in, Lord. 
May the sun of your righteousness, may your glory, may your integrity, may your perfection shine in our hearts, shine into our lives and change us to make us just a little bit more like you and change us so that in turn we too may have an impact on those around us, in our communities, in our families this Christmas. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we thank you that you are indeed the son of righteousness. We thank you, Lord, that you've risen in our lives, as it were. We thank you for the way that in doing that, Lord, you have rescued us, that we can stand before our holy God, knowing that we are uh, made clean by you, by what you have done and not by anything we have done. And we thank you, Lord, that that is good news. And we pray, Lord Jesus, that you would change us and mould us and make us more like you, that we in turn may shed your light abroad with the people that we rub shoulders with day by day. Amen. <laughs>